In a previous video, we talked about how if your firm were to buy stock in another company and your firm owned less than 20% of that investee, then you would use this thing called the fair value method, where basically your investment is going to be marked to market on the balance sheet, so it's going to be recorded at fair value, and any unrealized gains or losses are going to flow through to the income statement and affect net income. However, there is an exception to this fair value method because what if you can't determine what the fair value is, right? So when we're thinking about buying stock in Google or something like that, it's easy. We can go look on an exchange and see a quoted price to figure out what the fair value of our investment would be, right? But if we don't know what the fair value is, for example, if we have a startup company that isn't traded on any exchange or something like that, how would we go about figuring out the fair value, right? So we have this exception, it's called the practicability exception. And the practicability exception basically says, look, if you can't determine the fair value, if it's just really difficult and it's just very subjective, there's no quoted price or anything like that, then you account for the investment at cost minus any impairments. So if the investment, if you put $50,000 into a company, unless you have reason to believe that it's your investment's been impaired at some point, then it's just going to stay on the balance sheet at $50,000, right? You're not going to be having unrealized gains and losses and marking things to market because you don't know what the fair value is. It's just very difficult for you to tell, okay? So let me give you an example. Let's say that your firm buys... 4,000 shares of Flying Cars Incorporated for $50 a share, and there are 100,000 shares outstanding of Flying Cars, so you've bought a 4% stake. So normally, this would go for the fair value method, right? Because you have less than 20%, so you'd mark it to market on the balance sheet. But let's just say Flying Cars is not publicly traded and that you really don't have any idea. Let's just say, I mean, it's just somebody who a couple of months ago, they thought, hey, I could I could build a flying car and they started a company and you invested, right? So you put, you put your money in or your company put their money in, but there's really no easy way to tell what the fair value is of Flying Cars Incorporated. So you're going to, when you initially make this investment, you're gonna debit investment for 200,000. You're gonna credit, let's say you paid cash, you credit cash for 200 grand. And so it's going to go on the balance sheet. It's going to go on the balance sheet at $200,000. And now because we don't have any kind of, we can't look at a share price because it's not publicly traded, it's just going to stay at $200,000. Right? It's just going to stay at 200 which is its cost. It's just going to stay at cost on the balance sheet. Now, let's say that something happens. Let's say that the market for flying cars collapses. Maybe there's some high profile accidents or something people poorly drive their flying cars whatever the case there's the market collapses and some your auditor says look there's clearly been an impairment here this is clearly not worth 200,000 we don't know we can't just look uh, on a stock exchange and see what the price is but we know it's not $200,000 anymore it needs to come down so what you do is you bring in a valuation expert somebody who Although they're not going to be able to perfectly peg what the fair value is because that's that's why you didn't record a fair value to begin with, right? It was something very subjective and stuff. But they do some analysis, they come up with some estimates, and they appraise your shares at $25,000. So you're supposed to be at cost minus any impairments. So if the value is supposed to be $25,000 and you're at $200,000, then you've got to make an adjusting journal entry, right? You're going to have to make an adjusting journal entry. So what's going to have to happen is this is going to have to go down by $175,000. And so when that goes down, we call that an impairment. So you would debit imp impairment charge, which is, this is an expense. You'll so often see companies will say impairment charge or impairment. This is an expense, right? It's going to reduce net income by $175,000. And then you would credit flying cars you credit that investment for 175,000 so if someone were to go after this impairment and look at the balance sheet and say hey what is flying cars value at least in terms of the balance sheet it would be $25,000 which is its original cost minus the impairment